Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney and I am here with your top stories for this Tuesday, April 5th from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. This is the place here on 3 News Now where you get the stories that matter most to people here in Northeast Ohio because these are the stories that you are clicking on, that you are sharing, and you are reading from our website and our app. We start off with an update on what's going on between Ukraine and Russia. Yesterday, President Joe Biden was calling Russian President Vladimir Putin's actions in Ukraine war crimes. Well, today, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is saying the same thing. In his first appearance before the UN's highest body, he said that Russian troops are no different than terrorist groups like the Islamic State group. He said that R Russia needs to be brought to justice immediately for war crimes. And he is saying that Russian troops are doing things in Ukraine that we have not seen the likes of since World War II. He made this plea to the UN over video. And this is as more and more evidence continues to come out of terrible things that are happening to Ukrainian citizens outside of the capital of Kyiv. This is as Russia pulled back from the capital. Video footage that he showed, very, very graphic, warning you, going to graphically describe what was in that video. Bloody corpses ending with the words that said, stop Russian aggression. Now this is video from Bucha, which is where reports have said that there have been more than 400 bodies of civilians found. And some of the things that have been found with those civilian bodies are very, very disturbing. Zelensky said that Bucha is just one place and that there are similar horrific things happening in other places in Ukraine. Now, as this evidence continues to come out, there has been some evidence that the dead were bound and shot in the head. So what this is leading to is Western nations to expel dozens of Russian diplomats and propose further sanctions, including a ban on coal imports from Russia. And the head of NATO has now warned that Russia is regrouping its forces. This is something that war analysts have been talking about for several days now in order to deploy them to eastern and southern Ukraine for what the head of NATO was calling a crucial phase of the war and is warning that even more horrific acts might come to light as Russian troops continue to pull back from the northern part of Ukraine. NATO Secretary General Jens Stolenberg said, when and if they withdraw their troops and Ukrainian troops take over, I'm afraid they will see more mass graves more atrocities and more examples of war crimes. Another thing that has reportedly been discovered is a torture chamber discovered in Bucha. This is from civilians apparently trying to flee Kyiv as attacks have happened there. We'll continue to keep you updated on the disturbing news that is coming out of Ukraine. And today in Washington, D.C., people who are familiar with the situation say that Ivanka Trump, the daughter of former President Donald Trump, is expected to testify before the January 6th committee, January 6th being the date of the insurrection in Washington, D.C. Now, this is a big deal for the committee because they've been trying to schedule this interview since January, and she's expected to testify as the panel is trying to compile a record of what happened on the day of that attack when the former president's supporters interrupted the electoral college count and tried to stop certification of the 2020 election for President Joe Biden. Ivanka Trump was with her father most of that day, and what the panel is focusing on is trying to make very clear what the former president's actions were in the White House as his supporters were breaking in to the Capitol. There have been about 800 interviews so far conducted by this panel, but speaking to the president, the former president's daughter will be one of the most high-profile interviews to be had, discussions to be had, as they work to complete the work on the January 6th investigation. Now, what else is going on in Congress is Supreme Court nominee Katanji Brown Jackson moves towards a vote. And we now know that Ohio Senator Rob Portman said that he will not vote to nominate her. But for all intents and purposes, that likely won't matter. She is expected to be confirmed when that vote comes down. There have been Republican senators who have said that they will support the nomination of the judge. Republican Senators Lisa Murkowski and Mitt Romney said they would. So did Senator Susan Collins. She, she confirmed her support for Judge Jackson last week. And once the process is played out, 
if confirmed, Judge Jackson would be the first black woman selected to serve on the Supreme Court. Now, Portman said that he will not support her because he doesn't agree with her judicial philosophy, and this is based on what he says he took from her previous court rulings. You can read his full statement on WKYC.com. Here's what else is happening in Washington, D.C., which will affect many, many Americans. Student loan payments are expected to be caused again. So this will apply to 43 million Americans, myself included. And that group of people owes a combined $1.6 trillion in student loan debt. That's held by the federal government. So the presidency is expected to freeze those payments through August 31st, and interest is also expected to be put on hold, so no interest to accrue between now and August 31st. Student loan payments were scheduled to resume May 1st, but it is now, again, expected to be pushed back to August 31st. This is after Democrats in Congress asked for more time for people to prepare to pay those student loans. We have a positive update out of a story that broke on Sunday evening. There was a woman who was reportedly abducted from a transit stop here in Cleveland at the West Boulevard and Cuddell Station. Cuddle, Cuddell, sorry, not exactly sure how to pronounce that. But she has been found. She has been found and she is safe. That's according to the GCRTA Transit Police Department. They are continuing the investigation into the incident. We do know that there were two suspects erected, arrested in connection with this alleged kidnapping, but she has been found, the woman has been found, and she is safe, and we are very happy to report that. Now some news today for the city. Cleveland Airport Chief Robert Kennedy is resigning. He is the director of port control right now, and he oversees Hopkins International Airport. So in a letter to the city's chief operating officer, he said that he will be resigning, that it was not an easy decision to make, but he's going to devote all his time to being a father, a husband, and a grandfather. Kennedy was hired by former Mayor Frank Jackson in January of 2017. It took more than a year to find him for this position. He said in the letter that he is open to working on a short-term transition plan and will work with the city on what he hopes will be a smooth transition. 3 News reached out to the mayor's office for comment. New Mayor Justin Bibb. It's a breaking news story. It will be updated when we have more information to tell you there. Here's something that you need to be on the lookout for as we get into the spring. When it's spring, we sometimes refer to that here in Northeast Ohio as orange barrel season. And the Ohio Department of Transportation has announced its 2022 construction schedule. So we do know where you're going to see those orange barrels over the next several months. Ohio will be investing nearly $2 billion on 829 projects. This is across the state. 222 of those projects will be aimed directly at improving safety on Ohio roads. There will be 661 bridges improved, more than 7,600 miles of pavement improved, that's enough to cover the distance from Columbus to London, England, and back. So, a lot of road going to be under a lot of construction. 68 of the projects will happen in District 12. That covers Cuyahoga Lake and Geauga counties. There will also be projects in District 3, which covers Lorraine and Medina counties, and also District 4, which covers Summit, Portage, and Stark counties. We have a list of those on WKYC.com, so you can check that out. But here is a reminder from the Ohio Department of Transportation's director, Jack Marchbanks. This is a dangerous job doing work on the roads, and people can help by making it less dangerous, by paying attention, paying attention to those speed adjustments in the construction zones and moving over when you can, because there were a lot of, a lot of accidents last year in these construction zones, and some people were even killed. And they say that speed is one of the biggest issues in these work zones, so keep that in mind. Be safe, move over if you can, and give the people room to do the work. Speaking of doing the work, Everybody is hoping that the Cleveland Cavaliers make it to the 2022 playoffs without having to do those play-in games, and it's possible with just three games left on their regular schedule. But it's not necessarily likely. So in order to move past the play-in games and get a guaranteed spot as the sixth seed in the NBA playoffs, here's what would have to happen. The Cavs have to win all three of their remaining games at Orlando, at Brooklyn, and at home against Milwaukee. And the Toronto Raptors have to lose at least three of their four remaining games at home against Atlanta, Philadelphia, and Houston, and then wrapping up on the road in New York. Tall order, especially with all those home games for Toronto. Now, as the things stand right now, the Cavs are in seventh place. They're one and a half games ahead of the Atlanta Hawks. And if they do finish in seventh place, that would be a very big deal for Cleveland because that would put them in the play-in game situation and all of their play-in games would happen at home at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. 
that would be a great situation. So you might be wondering, how does a team be up by one and a half games? So I chatted with the people in our sports department. I was wondering this question as well. The reason they say that the Cavs are up one and a half games is because the Cavs have played more games at this point than Atlanta. So they've had more chances to win. So they can't say they're up by two games because that's not accurate. And they're up by more than one game. So they say one and a half games by the end of the season, that half drops off and they figure it out. So we will see what happens. Good luck to our Cleveland Cavaliers. And good luck to Rick founder Ricky Smith. He's the founder of Random Acts of Kindness Everywhere. I have him on my Three Things to Know podcast this week talking about the launch of his really amazing food truck. This is tied to his Rake Foundation. He's, ta he's uh, cooking up grilled cheeses and tater tots outside of Welcome to the Farm in the Flats. And I have to say, very exciting moment for me having a conversation with him this week because it not only was the first time I actually got to have an in-person guest on the podcast because it launched in the peak of the pandemic in November of 2020, but also the very first time I've been able to do an on-location podcast. So check that out. It's on WKYC.com on the WKYC YouTube page on all your podcast platforms if you want to listen to it, but then you can also watch it on the WKYC Instagram page and on my own Instagram page. Check that out. We get the backstory to the food truck. It's wild how he even got this thing here to Cleveland. And we learn about his connection to celebrity chef Michael Simon and how uh, Michael Simon ended up creating the menu. So, you know, those grilled cheeses are good. And I did actually get to try one of the grilled cheeses and I can vouch, yes, they are quite delicious. And if you are a fan of the arts, you'll be very excited to know that Hamilton is returning to Playhouse Square. It will have 48 performances. They will start in December. They'll be at the Key Bank State Theater December 6th through January 15th. Those tickets will go on sale late in the summer. Also, here's something you need to know. Playhouse Square's new 2022-2023 Key Bank Broadway series lineup will be revealed next week. And Hamilton is not in that lineup, okay? But... If you are a season ticket holder, you will get priority access to purchase tickets to, ha to Hamilton. So keep that in mind if you're maybe on the edge there and that might push you over the edge. That's important information to know. Cedar Point also has a new pass that is available for the season. It's called the Summer Pass and it is... $99. If you remember in the past, the gold pass was $99. So a couple differences here. The summer pass does not include access to the water park or discounts through the park's other season passes, okay? The gold pass does, but the gold pass is $135. That includes access to the water park, free parking, other discounts, early entry for the 2022 season. And, you know, as I said, when the gold pass initially launched, it was $99. But now it's $135, and the summer pass is $99. Does not include access to the water park, does include the free parking through Labor Day. But that's another option for you for Cedar Point. And we will end today with a top story, the top 20 baby names that are the most popular in Ohio for 2022. This is according to names.org. So we have 10 masculine names and 10 feminine names. So I'll tell you the top three feminine names. They are Olivia, Amelia, and Charlotte. And the top three masculine names are Oliver, Liam, and Noah. So there's number one names, Olivia and Oliver, pretty similar there. If you want to see the full list of the top 10 for each, 10 for the feminine and 10 for the masculine, you can go to WKYC.com and check that out. That's it for your three news now update today for Tuesday, April 5th. I will see you back here tomorrow with more three news now.